with the departure of Luca Garza for the NBA and Jack Nungy leaving for Xavier, the need at center was large for Iowa this offseason. Thankfully, Fran McCaffrey had a big man in Riley Mulvey who was willing and ready to reclassify for 2021. We'll sit down with Riley and talk about his decision to be a freshman in college this year, and we'll also talk about his role. Where does he see himself fitting into this year's squad? All that and much more during week 165 of Bradis Branded Thoughts, our sit down with Riley Mulvey. This is from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Are you a Hawkeye fan living in Story County? Do you feel isolated, like you're alone in a maze of red? Well, you're not the only one. And that's why we here at StoryCounty.News have launched a brand new section of our website from the Hawkeye of the Storm, which will feature our weekly podcast, Brada's Branded Thoughts, as well as other Hawkeye-related content for all you Story County residents who bleed black and gold, or if you live in western Iowa, eastern Iowa, or somewhere else other than Ames, and you're a Hawkeye fan, We'd love your support. All of our content is free, so again, give our Facebook page a follow, give it a like, and give our Twitter page a follow as well, at from the Hawkeye, at from the Hawkeye on Twitter. The more likes, the more follows, the more support we get, the more content we can continue to push out, and it's all free. It's from the Hawkeye of the Storm, hosted by StoryCounty.News, for the best Hawkeye content in the area. This is week 165 of Brad's Branded Thoughts and from the Hawkeye of the Storm. And we have a very special guest this week once again. And uh, we're back on the basketball front with big man Riley Mulvey, who is the newest addition to the 2021 class for Fran McCaffrey and company. And Riley, first of all, welcome. I know it's been a whirlwind of a few months for you, a lot of decision making and a lot of changes. So talk about what that's been like for you and your family. Well, the honestly, when I committed to Iowa a couple months ago, I was like expecting to do another full year of high school after this year and just not even like thinking about going at all. And then uh, they brought up to me that I could reclass up and I was just like, can I do that? And <laughs> I, I could, which uh, worked out really well now that I'm, uh, I'm going two weeks or something. And yeah. then we'll be doing straight workouts all summer. It's going to be great. So I want to clarify, who was it that actually initially brought that idea to your attention? Was it the coaching staff or was it your, your party, your, your, your side? So I had been thinking about it for a while, just like after I heard that Nunji had left, I was like, wow, there, there aren't any really, there's not many bigs there this year. So uh, I was like, just thinking about it in a passing thought, like, it'd be cool if I could go this year. And then uh, Coach McCaffrey ended up calling me as I left uh, my prep school to come back home for the year and then uh, called me and was like, what do you think about reclassing up? And I was like, I'd been thinking about it, but I didn't think it was really that an, an actual option. And then uh, we got it done, did everything, and uh, it worked out. So academically, you are all set to go. Um, and when did, when did you know you were all set academically? So after we started looking into it, we realized that I had done all the classes I'd need to to graduate because I had done 16 classes and uh, that I needed to be able to graduate and get into the NCAA. So awesome. we checked that and then it ended up working out. That's awesome. Um, all right. I do want to ask you this. First of all, couple questions um what's it like to be basically seven foot tall well at, at, at age what are you 18 now are you seven? Yeah, i'm 18 but uh this okay. part right here doesn't like doors that much because it ends up hitting them <laughs> up pretty often with uh where where i went to school the doors are all like six seven six eight doors so i hit my head on them a bunch and, okay. so uh, so how did it come about like what what age did you start to like you know, sprout up. I mean, what, what was so, that? <laughs> I've always like been tall. I was always the tallest in my class, always the tallest that uh, out of my friends, like I was always way taller than everybody. And then uh, shooting up, I was like, and going into like eighth or ninth grade, I forget which one I was uh, going into ninth grade. I think I was six, six. And then, uh, throughout like 
the eighth to 10th grade year, I grew about five inches per year. Wow. It, that's like combining the two, but like I grew like on a pace of five inches per year for like a year and a half. And then, uh, that's how I shot up to six eleven now. So are you done growing? No, I still have, uh, I, sh- I still should get another inch or two by the end of, uh, for the next couple of years. So you believe that you will be maybe in the seven one range by the time that you're maybe a sophomore in college? Yeah, I think that by the time I'm done growing, I'll hit seven one. I think that, uh, yeah, that, that that's probably what I'm going to end up being. So I guess my question too with this is, uh, and I, I spoke with your dad and kind of setting this interview up and, and, and he talked about how you're really trying to look at this as a developmental year and a year to learn. But I mean, you as a player and as a competitor, I'm sure you want to get out there and actually compete right away. And obviously you'll be able to compete in practice, but what is your mindset heading into this freshman year? Absolutely. I just want to try my hardest. And uh, if I can prove myself better, that's amazing that I'll be able to play in the games and play against other people. Because I feel like the better people I play against, the better I get, which is proven true with uh, whenever I went and played a big game, I'd always do better. And uh, I feel like every every like team being so much better in college than high school it's just gonna make me so much better if I can play so who, who is there somebody in the NBA or maybe somebody on the college level that you feel you've emulated your game after or maybe someone who's retired now who do you emulate your your game after you so uh it's really funny because for the longest time I had thought that my game was a little bit like a European big style like Porzingis and Jokic. Yeah. And then <laughs> my brother showed me a clip of uh, Pau Gasol. And my game is just like so similar to what he did okay. in all the clips that I saw that I'm just like, wow, it, it's really yeah. the same game style. That's interesting. Yeah. And, and Pau and Mark have both had tremendous careers and tremendous success, but they also – they're not Porzingis and they're not Jokic, but uh, I like that comparison. I know uh, Joshua Gundelay, when we had him on last year, kind of compared himself to Zach Randolph, which I thought was a, a wonderful comparison too, um, yeah. because, uh, you know, everybody's different. I will say this, as, as far as how your game translates to Iowa, you know, one major complaint, the biggest thing we hear, and I would probably echo some of these sentiments as well, frustration with Iowa fans over the past three, four seasons is, you're not a, you know, you're not naive to this, um, is defense. People are, are frustrated with defense and they want to see improvement defensively. And there were some improvements last year. And then we know what happened in the NCAA game against Oregon. Some, some holes kind of developed. So my question is, you are coming in, and I'm, and I'm not trying to infer there's tons of pressure on you in that regard, but what do you bring to Iowa defensively maybe that can maybe change the pace inside a little bit? So I've always prided myself on being like a uh, high level rim protector and almost every coach that I've that's coached me has always said that I'm probably one of the best rim protectors that they've seen or coached so far. And uh, I really pride myself on that. So I feel like I'll be able to protect the rim a bunch and make make our team be able to go and guard way past the perimeter and help if they get by now and i've seen some of your your game on tape but a lot of iowa fans there's not a whole lot out there as until you get here that, that iowa fans can go get a glimpse as to what you bring besides the rim protection how would you describe your offensive game i think that uh my offensive game is improving so much because of uh playing against the high level of bigs that were at the prep school i was at and uh the workouts i'm getting in right now I feel like my post game is improving so much and uh, my shot I feel like has improved so much and my mid range has always been there. So I've always had a good mid range. My three's improving every day and uh, my post up game is pretty good. So, <laughs> I think so at least. So, so talk a little bit about three point shooting. Is that uh, how big of a challenge is that when you stand six foot 11 and like you say, you're still growing. Is that, is that just an almost an awkward thing to, to practice or how do you view it? No, I, I think that uh, it, it's pretty, <laughs> cause I haven't grown that much this past two years. So I've gotten used to my height and it's not awkward to do that okay. stuff anymore. So when I shoot threes, it's just, 
normal. And I think that uh, the more practice that I'm going to get, I just need to get the shots up. So uh, first of all, what's your current weight and where does Fran, have you talked to the coaching staff about where they foresee you heading as far as your, your body size? So right now I'm 235 and uh, I, I think that uh, I haven't, talk to them about this exactly but i feel like the goal was like 250 ish okay. at the end of the summer so like gaining 15 pounds by the end and, and uh yeah go ahead go ahead sorry no that, that that was it it was just the gaining 15 pounds and getting to 250 is probably a good goal to have how much did you watch luca garza last year i i watched uh, a bunch of the <laughs> iowa games last year okay so um and I, I had this is also a topic that I discussed with your dad because, um, and I'm sure you you echo these same feelings that you are not coming in to replace Luca Garza, and you know there's sometimes that that mindset I think at least from the outside, especially when you have a six eleven guy leaving and now here comes another six eleven guy from out east. So how do you deal with that? When you know, even though you're, you're, you're focused, but how do you deal with those expectations a little bit when, especially when Luca Garza was the best big man, probably, well, definitely ever played Iowa and potentially, you know, certainly was the, the best player last year in the country uh, as far as a big man. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely big shoes to fill, but we're just like completely different players. And right. I feel like I'm going to go a different way and I'm going to try to be the best player I can. Hopefully I'll get to the skill level and like ability that he was at. And if I don't, I don't, but I think that I definitely have a chance to, and I think that I'm going to try and be the strongest player I can be and uh, prove the point that I was at his level. Let me go back a little bit, backtrack a bit. Um, your recruiting process, talk a little bit about that. I know Fran's a, an East coast guy, but uh was the Big Ten always a goal for you, or how did how did the Iowa uh, decision kind of come about? So, Iowa was one of the first schools that contacted me way back freshman year when I was at Albany Academy. Uh, my teammate Andre Jackson, who's at UConn now, he was getting scouted by Iowa, and uh, they ended up coming to one of our practices and uh, seeing me and. Uh, so they and and my dad like kind of kind of knows like Fran a little bit so they we kind of just talked about it and then uh to the point that they came next year to see me again in my sophomore year at Albany Academy I had improved so much and they they offered me after uh after the visit and uh just thought that uh I was gonna go because uh the relationship I had with them and uh it was kind of always I was probably going to end up going to Iowa just because of the relationships and how I view colleges based on relationships usually. So that was kind of always a thing that was probably going to happen. And then uh, I got, I got a bunch of other offers and great colleges, but I was definitely the best fit for me. Who would you have said was closest as far as an, another school that maybe was recruiting you the hardest? I'd say the the second closest after Iowa was probably Virginia Tech with because uh, uh, connections to the prep school I was at and okay. uh, they liked my game too. And so when you think, first of all, have you been to Iowa? I mean, it, it, I'm assuming you have taken a visit, but I, I'm trying to think back in the recruiting process with COVID. What was that like? Did you make it to Iowa City? I took an unofficial visit to University of Iowa back in 2018. Okay. I was a sophomore, I think it was. So what were your thoughts on campus? What were your thoughts on Iowa City? I know it's probably a lot different from it you know, was New York. Really freaking cool. I mean, every, everyone's so nice there. Like I, there's so many so nice people in Iowa City. And then uh the I went to the football game with the team, and that was just an experience that I'd never felt before. And it was really freaking cool. What game did you make it to? Do you remember? Uh Iowa versus Penn State. 2018 Iowa Penn State was that the I'm trying to think 2018 that was the night game with the yellow uniforms am I right uh, I, I don't remember too much about it right now but okay. uh it was October November 
And, okay. Uh, it was Penn State. Okay. Was it cold? Oh, yeah. And so w- weather difference. I mean, you guys obviously get plenty of, I'm assuming, snow where you're from. So is there a bit of a, have you looked into the, the climate difference between your home state and state of Iowa? I mean, where I'm at, I hadn't seen that much of a difference just because yeah. it's pretty much the same. Yeah. And so you grew up, I'm assuming, in where did you grow up? Were you, have you always been in New York? Again, I don't yeah. know. I've always been uh, in upstate New York by uh, Albany. And uh, then I spent like a summer down in the city one time. But I've okay. always been upstate New York until this past year in Connecticut. So moving to a, a rural place like Iowa, is that uh, a bit, I know you're upstate, but I mean, is that a little bit daunting as far as a uh, culture shock? It's funny because where I live is technically rural because of the fact that they, like my closest neighbors, like we have two neighbors close to us and then the next two are like half a mile down the road. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, it's funny because with how how it looks, it seems like we're so far away from everything. But then uh, we just hop on a highway that's literally three miles down the road, and uh, we can get to anywhere in a half hour. So uh, it, it's it's pretty it's pretty different. But I feel like with how I've grown up, it, it'd be just more of the same. Yeah, I think you're gonna love Iowa City, and, and like you said, the people. Um, I'm I'm an Iowa guy, born and raised, and uh, I would miss it if I moved away, which could happen someday, but uh, I would certainly miss it. So is there anybody on this team that so far has reached out to you that you feel that you've grown an attachment to um, as of right now? Well, I because of uh, Fran being an upstate guy, I kind of have talked to Patrick and Connor McCaffrey, and uh, I've kind of known them for a little while. But uh, I feel like the one that I'm talking to the most right now is going to be my roommate, Peyton Sanford, who's not on the team yet, but we're both going to be. So and Peyton like, Sanford, he, he, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I just feel like we're going to be great roommates and have a great time this year. And so what has he told you about uh, living in central Iowa? Uh, he hasn't really talked about that that much. We've just kind of done uh, different things about both going to be at Iowa and he could uh, – we it would probably come over to his place sometimes if my parents aren't here and different things like that. So you got Riley Mulvey, you've got Josh Ogundale. Um, and again, we haven't seen a whole lot of Josh. I don't know how well you know Josh or how well you know his game yet, but um, you, you guys seem to be sort of polar opposites, especially as far as body types. He's, he's a big guy who's probably trying to lose a little weight. You're a guy who maybe put on a little weight. So yeah. <laughs> that, that's a kind of a contrast, but how do you see that playing out uh, as far as competition once you get to Iowa City and actually get to, to run up and down the court with these guys? I think that that's going to be like a perfect contrast to have because we're going to be the people that we need to be able to go against. Like, cause I'm going to be, need to be able to go against the big guys who are a little bit heavier and more like can shove people around with just their body. And then he's going to need to be able to go against uh, people like me who are skinnier, taller, and have the footwork and ability to just try and get past people. So we're both going to need to be able to go against people with each other's skill sets. And uh, Philip Rebracha is another guy that uh, is now a Hawkeye, and it's obviously has Division One experience. There'll be plenty of competition to go around. Um, I wanted to ask you about assistant coaches. Obviously, I'm sure you're close to, I know you said Fran because of the connections with your family, but um, were there any of the assistants, whether it be Kirk Sherm or um, Billy Taylor, that you were closest to in the process? Billy Taylor. He definitely has talked to me the most. And uh, yeah, I, I, I've talked to him. I feel like we have a great relationship. We're pretty close with, uh, with how we talk. And so when you get to Iowa, when, what are your plans for, for moving to Iowa City? I mean, is it, is it, and I know you said before our, our interview that you've got some things happening here soon. So what, what, what is your calendar looking like? So I'm supposed to head out June 2nd to go there and then do some medical stuff with, uh, with Iowa. And then, uh, I think after that, we're just doing, uh, workouts for the summer. And, uh, my parents are actually moving out there for the summer to oh, nice. renting a place and, uh, being out there with me. And That's awesome. uh, I feel like it's going to be a fun summer. Yeah, no, it will be.
and with COVID improving, you know, you hope that kind of it can yeah. return to a more normal summer. So let's kind of run a couple of sort of fun topics, non-Iowa topics before we get off here. NBA playoffs are starting up. Um, I know we talked before, you're not a huge NBA guy, which kind of surprised me. With, yeah, with the basketball like background. college guy, like with uh, the NCAA happened during COVID and stuff. Yeah. I definitely followed more college stuff than NBA stuff. So do you have a, you have a favorite or I shouldn't say a favorite team, but maybe a, who do you view as the favorite to uh, make it to the NBA playoffs? Well, my favorite team was the Spurs way back when, like, yeah. I, I, it was funny because I hadn't been watching too much NBA for the past, like, couple of years. The, when I was a little kid, my, like, my brothers, like, kind of, my, my older brother and my parents, like, kind of forced me to watch it. And I was like, okay. oh, well, I guess my favorite team is the Spurs. And uh, I really liked uh, Mono Ginobili. And, sure. Uh, that, that was the team that I enjoyed. And then uh, this year, I feel like, I feel like I've watched a little bit of uh, Jokic and uh, Doncic on the, uh, Mavs so I feel like those two teams are the the Jazz and Mavs that's awesome because I'm a huge Mavericks fan um we've got family in Dallas my brother is a big Jazz fan so Mm -hmm. um but you know the Spurs I I, back back in the day Manu Ginobili Tim Duncan those teams versus Dirk and you know you know 2011 was Jason Kidd Jason Terry and Tyson Chandler and those guys yeah that that was some classic NBA hoops um, if there was another sport that you would play, I know it's probably hard to play <laughs> other sports when you're six eleven. But if there was another sport you could play, what would it be? Well, I'm glad you brought this up because I have three sports that I would love to play besides okay. basketball. I think that uh, my favorite right now would be spike ball because I do that with a bunch of people. You ever heard okay. of spike ball? I have never heard of spike ball. So spike ball is like a little trampoline net thing that's okay. in the middle and you have like a little ball that's like i have heard of this size a little bit bigger than tennis ball and it's like uh inflatable yeah. so you can uh it's like volleyball rules kind of where you hit it onto the net except yeah you hit it onto the net teams of two and you get it back and forth from your you and your partner and then you gotta spike yeah. it down and you gotta get it hit hit it on the net and then on the ground for a point. I have seen that. It looks very, very, it looks like a difficult sport. I mean, it's a, there's a lot of quick moving and. Oh yeah. Hand-eye coordination is definitely something you need. I feel like playing that is something that you can do to improve it, which is something that I've done. (laughs) Right. And then uh, another sport that I uh, was going to play at Albany Academy back in the day was tennis. Oh man, I, I was a tennis guy growing up. And uh I I enjoy playing tennis. Tennis is fun. I will say this, I don't know any six eleven guys uh on the pro tour, but there were, you know, John Isner. I don't know how much you followed professional tennis, but John Isner, um he's a dude who I don't know if you six 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 seven and I mean pretty respectable pro guy. So you might yeah. be able to you certainly would have a big serve. Because yeah, <laughs> height never hurts to serve in tennis. <laughs> and so, then uh, the last sport would have been uh, volleyball. Volleyball okay. seemed always fun to me. Yeah. So you play? Do you play volleyball? I'm sure you probably didn't play it in high school. I don't know if you your uh, your uh, your school yeah, offered. My school, school didn't have a volleyball team. If it did, I definitely would have played like in the fall or whatever it was. Yeah. But uh, for volleyball, I've played like a couple like games with friends and stuff like that. And each time I've done it, it's been hilarious and fun. I'm sure it's probably pretty easy to to uh, spike if you're six. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd say I definitely. I I was uh, I blocked a bunch of the spikes too. It was very fun. So, what do you you don't follow the NBA much? Um, you talked about calling college basketball. Is there another sport or another league that you watch? Do you watch golf? Do you watch NASCAR? I mean, what what do you, what do you do other than basketball? Other than basketball, I kind of like play video games and watch anime and watch different TV shows and stuff like that. So what do you TV shows talk about TV shows? Uh, TV shows. I feel like my favorite TV show is probably uh, The Flash. 
Okay. My wife Flash is a good one. <laughs> That's funny. Said. My wife loves the Flash. Oh, I don't know that she's watched. She watched Supergirl, The Flash. Um, she's on the Blue Bloods now, so she's kind of all over the map. Um, <laughs> so okay. So TV shows. What other hobbies do you have? Are you? Um, did you did, when you were when you were growing up? Did you have a part time job? Uh oh, yes, I did. Oh, uh, this is a okay. great story. <laughs> so before I got to high school, when I uh, turned fourteen, uh. Uh-huh. I looked into it and in New York state, you can get working papers at 14 and go get a job. So I got my working papers at my school and I went to go get a job at a great escape six flags, which wow. Six flags is. Yeah. And uh, the job I did there was like running like the ring tosses and the, uh, the shooting (laughs) games. And it was hilarious and I loved it. And I did that. So, that was just a summer. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So, um, and, and where is that located as it relates to your, your home base? Is that close by? Oh, it's about 45 minutes to an hour away from my house. Okay. And uh, each time I went up there, I would uh, spend the entire day there, whether I was working or not, I would go there because yeah. I could get in for free with my, uh, with my uh job there you could always get so in. you're are you a roller coaster guy i was a roller coaster guy but now i'm too tall i can't ride yeah. roller coaster. <laughs> yeah uh there have been some uh horror stories i know there's a uh uh down just south of here actually well, of course we're from ames but uh in kansas city there i don't know if you heard this was this was probably four or five years ago a kid on a water roller coaster that unfortunately uh, lost his head and uh yeah i don't know that you i would feel real safe as a 611 guy going on a roller so do they not even allow you on these rides anymore no not not a lot of them there's a couple you really have but so you really got to take advantage of the the the, uh the advantages of life as a 611 guy because there are some disadvantages yeah Uh, all right well let's finish off with back circling back to basketball I'll just ask you a pointed question. Do you see your, yourself redshirting your, your freshman year, yes or no? I don't. I think that uh, I'm ready to, like, play. I think that I can go against everyone that during this summer and with Josh and with uh, Philip. I think that I can be an entirely different player by the time games start, and I think that by then I'd be ready to play. Okay, and I, I final question here kind of wrap this whole thing up sum it all up you talked about shot blocking you talked about you know improvement in shooting and offensively what do you bring to this Iowa team to the Big Ten that you view as unique to you I think that what I bring is uh I I think that uh bringing the uh shot blocking and bringing how I play help defense I feel like my defensive game is the best part about my game and I feel like how I play as a defender is completely different to how other people play as a defender. I feel like it's just something that's, I find, I think that is unique about me. And uh, I think that uh, it'll bring the team to a level above. Well, that's, I think probably what uh, everybody wanted to hear. <laughs> it's for you to say <laughs> defense. So you make a lot of people happy here in Iowa by, uh, by, by answering that question that way. So Riley, we appreciate the time, man. And, uh, again, congratulations on your decision. Congratulations to your whole family. I know it's a, you know, you will never forget this year in, in making this decision and certainly the next four or five years, whatever, however long you're at Iowa, you're going to enjoy. So again, we appreciate it and welcome to Iowa city. Thank you. All right. This has been week 165 of Brad's Brandon thoughts. We will talk to you soon.